And welcome back to the Maximum. No, sorry. Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. That's my other podcast, Maximum Lawyer. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you all had a great weekend. We had a good weekend. We were out and about watching Noor play softball. Spent a little time around the pool. It's getting hot in here in St. Louis. It's about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's getting pretty hot. Um, I am going to be here answering immigration questions for the next hour or so. Looks like the waiting room is already full. This is episode number 380 of the Immigration Answer Show, which means we are 20 away from 400. Seems like we were just headed towards 300 not so long ago, but when you do 30 shows in Ramadan, that's a big jump. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and maybe why you care about immigration. Oh, my hair's looking a little crazy. It looks sort of wild today, sort of wild. The hair I have left. Now Huli's fixing her hair. All right, all right. We're going to get started. Since we got the waiting room full, I'm going to go and talk to Yudkanta. Yudkanta, hello. Hi, Jim. Um, How are you? I wanted to ask you. I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm great. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. I'm calling out of a little bit of a desperate question. Very quickly, my family are all green card holders. Uh, that is my mother, my dad, and my sister, who's about 20 years old. They received their green cards in August of last year. I was a dependent of my mother's on an L2 visa for about seven years before I turned 21, and then I had to transfer to an F1 visa to finish my last two semesters of school, and now I'm on STEM OPT. Uh, the job market is really tough, and I've gotten one too many rejections. The most recent one was a job that I was offered, and then they came back to me three weeks later and said, hey, we can't work with you because you don't have a green card. So I'm really trying to understand what my options are in terms of what can happen for me. Um, and I recently learned about something called the following to join clause about joining legal permanent residence if you're a child and i wanted to understand if there is any sort of way i am over 21 i'm 24 years old i'm unmarried i just want to know from someone who probably knows more than right. immigration forms online so follow to join doesn't doesn't apply to you 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 aged out before mom got her green card so that's that's sort of off the table what is your field of study uh, I studied uh, half computer science and half arts, but I'm under the STEM category. I'm in computer software and media applications. And you're in you're in the initial one year of STEM or one year of OPT. No, I'm currently on STEM. I've been on STEM since January of this year. Okay, and so have you had a job at all since January of this year? Yes, I've been working. I worked at a nonprofit and another tech job last year. I am just, I had to quit the job that I was working on. So I've been unemployed for about 60 ish days now. I have another 75 days of unemployment left um, and really, really, really need something. Well, but for OPT, you only get 60 days total of unemployment. So I don't know. How do you have? I had 90 time? days of unemployment from. Um, OPT, and then I got an additional 60 days of unemployment because of being on STEM. So currently, I have 75 days left. And when you say you've been, you've been, you've had a lot of doors closed in your face. How many are you talking about? Most recently, today, I heard from a rather large company that has E-Verify and everything. They just straight up said, "Sorry, you don't have a green card. We can't hire you." Yeah, but that's just one employer. How many overall have you been looking for is my question. 30 plus. So now we got to do 30 more. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I I would I would get on myvisajobs.com and look for companies that are looking for people with that that have sponsored people with that background for an H1B. I mean, your your play now is an H1B. That's your best bet. So that has to be your focus. And I know that it's easy for me to say, because I haven't had 30 denial notices, but you just got to say to yourself, it might take 100, but I'm going to keep going. You, do, you don't really have a choice unless you want to leave the United States or go back to school. Is that something? Okay. The other thing that maybe I need to get understood from you is that I have the impression that because an I-130 has been filed for me, 
that I can't really apply for an F1 anymore because I have the intent to immigrate. Is that something that's true? Entirely. If you go, if you go, if you go overseas, they won't give you a new visa stamp. But as far as going back to school, uh, USAIS will let you do that. Yep. It's the visa part that's the problem. So you're sort of stuck here. But if your family's all here, that's not the worst thing in the world. But yeah, you're stuck in the United States because if your visa stamp has expired and if you're on STEM OPT, I suspect that it has, then that means that um, the next time you leave the United States, you're going to have to go to, to an embassy and get a stamp. And that's where the fact that there's an I-130 pending for you becomes a problem because those are inconsistent. Now with an H-1B, right. if you find an employer to sponsor you for an H-1B, um, then, then that's a dual intent visa and you would be able right. to go overseas and get that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful to know. Thanks. Good luck. Just hang in there. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's hard on the job front. Thank you. See ya. All right. Vic's up next. Hello, Vic. You're on mute, Vic. Yeah, hi. Sorry. Uh, I'll stop my camera and ask ask the question. Yes, you can. Go ahead. Uh, so thank you for taking my question, Jim. I really appreciate your time. So uh, my uh, my situation is uh, my fiancé is divorced and French citizen. I am a green card holder. She has one child. And uh, she is coming here in ESTA visa, and we want to get married. So my question is, uh, if she comes and we get married, um, will there be any further complications like not getting ESTA visa um, in the future or being stopped at the port of entry in the future, those kinds of things? So her plan is to come here and during the 90 days get married and then go back home? Yes. And then apply for consular processing? Um, maybe, yes. That's what I'm asking. What would be the other steps we could do? Is that okay? Yeah, I mean that's to me that I I thought I thought you were going to say something different. I thought you were going to say that she was coming here, you were going to get married and then apply for a green card. That would be really risky since you only have a green card. I would I would vote no on that. So I'm more comfortable now. I wouldn't get married in the first sixty days that she's here, even if she's not going to apply for adjustment. But if you got married in that last ninety days, that would be better than if she got married in the first sixty. Okay, she she will be here for uh, for only a month. For only one month. So it, this rule doesn't technically apply, I don't think, in your situation. But if somebody enters the United States on a ESTA or a non on a visit visa, but gets married within the first 60 days, then they are presumed to have had immigrant intent. And that could cause problems with her immigrant visa later. So I don't know how happy I am about this. Oh, plan. OK. OK. So if we get um, like in last 90 days, then that's OK, but not within two months. That's your take, right? Yeah. And the other thing you could do, the other thing you could do, I'm not a big a big fan right now of fiance visas, but is this the first time you've met face to face? Sorry? Have you met before face to face? Yeah, we met like two or th two times or three times already. Yeah. The other thing is you could do a fiance visa. Um, okay. I don't like fiance visas. I like marriage cases better. But um, if I, I would say to do the fiance case, unless she can stay for that 60 to 90 day window. Oh, okay. It's me. This is me being overly protective. There's probably some immigration lawyers who would say, oh, yeah, go ahead and get married on the first 30 days and go back home. No problem. I think that's just opening up a can of worms that you don't need to. I think it probably isn't an issue, but I just. Um, I just don't want to give them any ammunition or problems for your case. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jim. And uh, if I want to retain you as my lawyer, what, um, what should I do? Yeah. So just email the office, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com, info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com. Okay. And just say, my name's Vic. I was the second caller on Monday's show. And, and I want to work with you guys to get my fiance or girlfriend or spouse a visa okay thank you so much jim i really appreciate your time and your insight really See grateful you, for that thank you have a great day all right next up will will are you with us yeah i'm here jim hi will hi jim how are you doing great how are you 
I'm all right. I got a question that I, I think might benefit your audience, but I came on your show maybe about Junior Ramadan series. Yeah. And I, I was asking about um, applying for STEM OPT while having a pending uh, marriage-based uh, green card or I-765. Yep. So I expedited my I-765 and I, I fortunately got it approved. So I'm in the situation now that my card is produced. Um, I applied for my STEM extension before my um, my time was up. What I'm my my current EAD OPT EAD expires this month on the nineteenth. Do you recommend me? How, how I guess sorry. My question would be then. I know you said. I should continue working on my OPT status with having my um, I-765 marriage base um, approved. Will that automatically deny my STEM extension? No, it won't. Okay. So f to, to continue with my current EAD as an F1 student, quote unquote, would I just have to continue using my um, automatic extension that I have with my job so I could get a 180 days extension? You mean... You mean, what? Wait, the EAD you have through school is is a uh, regular OPT, but then I, I I extended it. I extended oh, right. it during STEM. Yeah. So, um, and so your question is, if I want to be extra extra careful in case something goes horribly wrong with the green card case, and I don't want to work on that EAD, mm -hmm. so as to not put my student status at risk, is it better for me to just work on the OPT? EAD with 180 day extension. The answer to that question is yes. Okay, so should I just for, forget about the marriage based green card for well, the marriage based I seven six five for now and just continue with that? Sure. Okay. And uh, 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 other than if I wanted to get a second job or something, I'll just have to use um, my marriage based green card. Marriage based work card. Work card. Okay. And 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 I think another question is. Um, I got. I went to apply for my license or change my license from state to state, but then my the license they only gave me like two weeks on my license. I guess that's because the end date on my OPT is in like about two weeks, or my current EAD card is in two weeks. Um, with me giving them my new marriage based EAD as let's say a, a proof of uh, yeah, no, current... that's fine. That's fine. And okay. wait a minute, so. How do you, where do I, I don't I'm know. sorry if I confused you. No, no, you didn't confuse me at all, but I, I want to backtrack to what you had said before. Okay. I don't know that what you said is true or not. It might be, I might be missing the boat here and I shouldn't, I should probably know this, but do you automatically get the 180 day extension on the original OPT EAD by applying for STEM OPT extension? Well, yeah, that's what it says on my um on my receipt notice. On my receipt notice, when I apply for my STEM extension, it says if I have um I'm probably not using it word for word, but if it has it says if my original class on my current EAD is the same as the class on the receipt notice, yeah. then I get yeah. an extension. And that's where I think that's might be where the confusion is. I think it's a different class. I think. Oh yeah, I think yeah. The you STEM might extension be right. is a different class. You know, I this is something I should know. I can check this out. So I want to know: Does I'm writing this down? Does filing for STEM automatically 100 extend 180 days? I don't think it does. Okay. Yeah, because I think the category for my current OPT is CO3B, and yeah. I think the STEM extension is 30C. C O three C, which is why I think you you only got the two weeks and why you're probably going to have to work on the marriage based EAD, but that should be fine. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Okay, yeah, it says card is being produced, um, so I guess I should have that in a in time for um before expiring. Yeah, so I think you're good. Okay, yeah, that's all I want to know. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Will. See you, buddy. All right, bye. All right, bye. All right, that was Will. That was a good question. I almost got stumped there for a second, but I caught myself, so I'm glad I did. Hey, I saw that Art. Let's see, where's Art? Art has his uh, naturalization interview coming up. I think it's tomorrow or the next day. So just some tips for the naturalization interview. Remember, listen to the question. Short answers. Always tell the truth. Get there early. 
bring all your paperwork, be organized and be pleasant, dress up nice like you're going to a job interview, be respectful, let the officer direct the interview, don't say too much, that's it. Make sure you're ready for the test. I'm sure you'll do fine, Art. Good luck. Yep, tomorrow. All right, Art, good luck. Let us know tomorrow how it goes. We'll be back here tomorrow. Tomorrow's show is at, also at 4 p.m., I think. Is that right, Huli? So, Art, come back. Let us know how it goes. Hopefully, all is well. Let's say hi to Sila. Hi, Sila. Hi, Jim. Hi, Art. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. What's up? Uh, Yes, I have a question. Um, my sister um, applied for my green card, and uh, I, I came here as a F1 student, and um, I overstayed, and then my sister applied for my uh, green card. And um, I, when I applied, I knew that I might be denied, but um, I went ahead and applied anyway. Why? So, uh, yeah, after two Why? years. Why did you do that? Well, because uh, I needed uh, I, I needed to just you know try and see you know that you know it's it's not uh, approvable it's not approvable and all you've done is told them that you're here out of status. Yeah, I know, and um, they gave me uh, a work permit, which um, the first time uh, before my interview they gave me a work permit, and I went for the interview. Uh, the officer actually was really nice, and uh, she said that she would give me uh, a green card, but she had to get uh, an approval from her supervisor. And I waited two years for a decision, and then uh, they gave me the uh, decision. I, I got it, I think, uh, like uh, last month or two months ago, and I was denied. Sure. Yes. And uh, my in the letter, they said that I can uh, reapply. If I want to, I can reapply. And I just wanted, uh, because now I don't, I'm not going to have a work permit. I was. You never should have had a work permit. Okay. This is, this is all a bad idea. I don't know why you did this, or I certainly don't know why you would apply again. Yeah. I mean, well, th there's an argument to be made that your work card was fraudulently obtained. I know they gave it to you, but you're getting pretty close to, especially if you file again, you know, you know that you're not entitled to a work card and you know that your green card's not approvable, but you're still applying for immigration benefits to which you are not eligible or entitled. So, um, that's just setting yourself up for big, big problems like, you know, jail time or deportation. I think you should back away from them and, and this and figure something else out. Okay. I have my, my daughter turns uh, 21 in three years. Yes. So uh, my question, so, yeah. So no, don't file a green card application with your sister again in the hopes of keeping things alive until your daughter becomes 21. If mm -hmm. I, I would instead not do anything. See, the problem is, let's just say, let's just say that they concluded that you got that work card through fraud, right? Uh, okay. If they conclude, if they decide that you got that work card through fraud, then even if your daughter becomes a 21 year old U.S. citizen, they could say, oh, well, we totally believe that you're her mother and we totally believe that you're entitled to a green card and we totally believe that she's eligible to sponsor you. But, but there's this fraud that you committed by getting that work card and applying for that green card through your sister. Mm -hmm. And then they say, you don't get a, you don't get, you don't, you, that's making a very, very clean green card application through your daughter. Very, very messy by filing dumb things. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. But um, do you know why the officer would, you know, like... Because uh, she doesn't know what she's doing. She was brand new. They're like, hey, oh. take this case. And then yes. it got to the supervisor and they're like, what the heck? She doesn't even know what she's talking about. Okay. I'm going to make, make a new video called Don't File Dumb Stuff. <laughs> okay. So you think that I should just wait for my daughter and just don't do anything right now? Just wait until she turns 21. I think that's better than filing for something through your sister. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye, Sila. See ya. Bye. Alexander Hill is next. What do you say, Alexander Hill? Hi, how are you? Great. How are you doing? 
Doing great, Jim. So uh, a little news flash here. So I checked out YouTube an hour ago, found your channel. Oh, and nice. I called your office. The office said we can't help you. Talk to Jim on the live stream. This is 30 minutes ago. So here and we are. Then, yeah, here we are. So social media works. Okay, I like ah, it. Okay. Um, so this story is pretty interesting. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of someone else. Um, sure. She came to this country under her father, naturalization, back in 2014. Got a green card. Um, waited five years. In 2018, her father got passports for her, for his whole family, okay, including her. All right. Fast forward to today, or about two years ago, she lost the passport. Okay. So I come into the picture to try to get a new passport. You know, as if you just fill out the application, it's lost. I just need you to generate a new one because we're on file for it. We got a letter back from the passport agency stating she's not a citizen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They said that because she, well, basically, I said fine. So the letter said, get it. She needs to apply for a passport with her own naturalization, not her father's, because she wasn't supposed to do it with her father's back when they actually did it. How old was she when her dad naturalized? She was eighteen. Oh, she was over eighteen. She was over eighteen. It was like so two she, months. Yeah. So they're right. So they're right. Right. So my issue is, is that they issued it. Right. And she's been claiming to be a citizen this whole time. Yeah. So to meet their request as to say, they say, hey, submit a naturalization certificate and it will be good. If I go fill out an N-400, no. as you know, question yeah. 12. Right. If you've claimed, I'll have to put yes. Right. Yeah. Which is a risk. Well, first of all, you shouldn't be doing any of this. She should have a lawyer be doing this. That's number one. And number two, you're right. That's going to be a big problem for her. She's she has claims to citizenship now. There are exceptions. Um, one is for a quick recantation, which we don't have here. The other one is there's there's a little bitty wrinkle, and it, and it involves basically this fact pattern. I'd need to look at her fact pattern, and I'd need to look at the the rule. But there's a little rule that says if because of the naturalization of a parent, mm -hmm. you had a reasonable belief. And I'm making it too simple, and it's not this easy but that you had a reasonable belief to think that you were a citizen, then that's not the kind of false claim to citizenship that would keep her from being able to naturalize. But it's a big old mess for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, we filled in 600 and we got a denial letter back. They told us that she is eligible to do the N-400, right? Of course, they would say that. Prior to that, we tried to, you know, when they, when they you know, when you issued a passport, they take the green card and destroy it. So she didn't have a passport. And I said, we need to file for the I-90 to get her another green card. Immigration denied the I-90 because they said on file, she's a citizen. I took that back to the passport. They said, no, she's not a citizen. So we're waiting on confirmation on if she's a citizen or not. Cause we, cause somebody so, messed up somewhere. Wait, but you're trying to solve the problem the wrong way. Okay. The right way to solve the problem is to file an N-400. But, we we and okay so that's where i need a lawyer well i think you need a lawyer for a lot of it i mean the first place to start mm -hmm. would be to do a freedom of information act request for her her uscis file her father's uscis file and her state department file because you're going to need you're going to need when when this case goes to interview this is going to be one of those cases where she passes the test she meets all the eligibility, then the whole thing becomes a legal question as to whether or not she has a false claim and whether or not she's a U.S. citizen. So mm -hmm. there's there, there, are, there have been many cases where someone has had an N-400 denied where they said, you're already a citizen, you need to file an N-600, and then they deny right. the N-600, and then vice versa. Somebody files uh, an N-400, and they're like, no, you need to file an N-600, and no, you need... So, so this isn't the first time that even USCIS isn't sure what the situation is. Frankly, dad confuse them by filing mm -hmm. for her for the passport when she wasn't a u.s citizen yet right so that's mm -hmm. and and you know you're right the federal government but but the federal government told her that she's a citizen by giving her the passport so this this is going to be a long slow a long slow process i think okay. i think she's eligible and i think she can get her citizenship but yeah she definitely needs a lawyer so People on our team shouldn't have said that this isn't something we can help with because this is totally something we can help with. It's just they're probably thinking passport. We don't know what to do about passport, and they probably went a little too fast. But this is we've handled cases like this. It's it's tricky, but we can help.
Okay. So I'll just send an email to that info email. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, man. Have a good day. You too. All right. See ya. All right. All right. Cooley, tell them to pay attention to that one. See if you can find them. Zizu's here. What's up, Zizu Dinosaur? Oh, hey, Jim. How are you? Great. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you for asking. Um, my question is, I came to the United States two years ago on a B2 visa. Um, and I submitted my I-589 for asylum. Um, and six months later, I got granted a work permit based on my asylum case. Uh, so last month, I mean, been dating my wife for like over a year. Last month, we got married and she filed I-130 for me. Yeah. Um, so my question, well, my first question is like, um, am I eligible for concurrent filing? Can I file the 485 as well? Where's your asylum case? It's still, in California. Is your, and is your, hold on, is your, is your asylum case still at the asylum office or is it at the immigration court? No, it's at the asylum office. It's been bending since then. Okay. And, um, you already filed the I-130 or you're getting ready to, and you want to know if you can uh, I, we filed this like a week ago or like 10 days ago. And just today turned actively reviewing. Well, so then by definition, it's not concurrent filing because concurrent filing means that you filed them concurrently, which means at the same time. Um, but, but also again, like, I, I'm not trying to debate, but when I was looking online, what they said, like they said, as long as your I-130 is pending, you can submit for it. 485 and still consider concurrent yeah well that yeah that's what i was going to say is that you can file the 45 anytime after the i-130 now since you already filed the i-130 i would wait until you get the receipt notice back because when i got you it file, i got it already then you're going to want to include that in the 45 okay um the the one thing that i mean we we're not really paying attention to for like the evidence for the I-130, we submitted like our lease contract, like marriage certificate, um, like joint bank account, but we did not submit like picture of ourselves, which turns out that we're sub we were supposed to submit something like this to prove that we're in relationship. So the question is for the I-130, uh, my wife filed this online. So do we gather the pictures of of us and put it on a PDF and submit it online, or do we send it with the 485, or do we do both? No, I would do it electronically. Electronically, and do and we send? Put, are I we put, supposed to send this? Yeah. I put two on a page with a description underneath each photo, what it is and the date, okay, and so that you can explain to them why you're including it. Now, wait, I have a I have a different question. Go ahead. Is there, is there anything in your asylum case that you're worried about? Not at all. Okay, good. Okay. All right. What other questions do you have for me? Um, no, that, that, that was pretty much it. So I just wanted to ask if I'm eligible for concurrent filing or not, because I didn't want to file it and then realize that, oh, you're not eligible. You're good. All right. Thank you very much. Very Thanks, you much see you, buddy. Good luck. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right. All right. All right. So we're at around the 430 mark, halfway through enjoying the show. I hope you are. I hope you are. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know again where you're watching from. Also, if you have just 30 seconds and could do me a favor and go to reviewhackinglaw.com, leave us a quick review, a five-star review. It'd be a big, big help. We would appreciate it. A five-star review. If you have five minutes, we would appreciate it. Thanks so much. Let's say hi to Javed. Hello, Javed. Thank you. What's up? How you doing? Not too bad. How are you? I'm I'm not too bad either. What's up? Um, so I had a situation that happened to me the other day. Um, can you turn off the background music? I'm having a hard time hearing you. Okay. Thanks. Can you hear me better now? Much better. Thanks. Go ahead. All right. So you know, I'm currently at the NPC stage right now. Um, my stepdaughter, she got documentary qualified on the tenth of May. They didn't send me an email um, because they wanted the transcript for my aunt, well, my wife's aunt. Anyhow, um, we sent them the transcript. They accepted it um, on the 12th, two days after. 
the sent me an email on the 25th of May, but I guess maybe they wanted to, you know, tell me that I'm documentary qualified and stuff like that, but they, they didn't, they just send a, a, a small email and I went online, checked, there wasn't anything indicating that they documentary qualified me. So I was wondering if I should be worried about anything yet. No. What embassy are you waiting on? Barbados. How long ago did USCIS approve the I-130 for your stepdaughter? Um, it was December of 2022. I think it so, was the so the, State, so the State Department's only, the NBC's only had the case for about five months? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, I think you're fine. You're just waiting for an interview date in Barbados. Probably just be a couple months. I think you're good. Okay. All right. That's all. That's all. Have a good day. All right. You too, sir. See you, bud. All right. Let's say hi to Mr. A. What do you say, Mr. A? Hey, uh, this is Ali. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good, uh, I have, uh, I, I, I just talked to your office last week. Uh, my brother filed a reunion in 2016 to bring my parents here as a U.S. citizen. Yeah. Uh, in July 3rd, they did the interview. Um, they told my mom she's good to go, and they put my dad in the administrative process. I think I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. You were on the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I talked to you before about it. So on May this year, they asked for uh, to send like all the medical exam. And um, so my my father did medical exams. We sent all the paperwork. They give the visa to my mom and they say it's still in, in the space process <laughs> until now, you know, so. So you're going to sue him? Yes. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, assume. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I talked to the office and they told me like they wanted more details uh, about the case, um, which is I called two offices. I called the one in Missouri and the one in San Diego. So, which one I should well, I? It all, goes to, it all goes to the same place. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to the same place. Okay. So, what's uh, the question? So, what the question is, uh, I mean, what, what, I mean, so you recommend we just go ahead and sue them then? I mean, they had their interview in July. They're, they're clearly engaged on the case they've approved mom's case and for whatever reason with dad they haven't so yeah i think that the only way dad's going to come is if you sue him okay perfect um so is there like i mean since now i talk to you is there like any way you just give them a heads up so uh, i mean for the office so that way um... uh Huli's trying to find you in the comments um if she can't can you can you can you um can you leave her a private chat just with your email address and then she can look it up and then, and then we can follow up from there. Okay. Perfect. Yes, sir. Have, have they sent you an agreement yet? No, they haven't sent me. No, they say, uh, okay. if we can, cause like, since my brother, he did the filing, she say, yeah. um, we want to, if we want to have a meeting like you and your brother and I mean, and the attorney, yeah, that's what they trying to do. That's San Diego. That's when I call San Diego office. Yeah. But you're ready to go. Yes. Yeah. I'm yeah. Ready. Okay. Yeah, just put your email address in the private chat and, and Julio will follow up with you. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, bud. Bye, Ali. See ya. Bye-bye. All right. Ilkin is here. What do you say, Ilkin? Hello, Jim. Give me a second. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. What's up? Thank you for doing this. So, Jim, sure. uh, basically, uh, um, our I-751 got denied uh, because we did not respond to our fee with which we did not know about so yeah, then, yeah that old uh, trick yes yeah, so it what happened after the interview the interview was tough my my wife is black i don't know if it was the reason basically we didn't submit much evidence but we submitted like posts from your mom and you know social media about me and you know we usually fake couples never do that so basically we went to the interview it was a little shocking because was tough and there was an RFE I guess which we didn't know about so it got denied because we didn't respond to RFE and we refiled basically what happened and uh, right now I have a question I was thinking to join US military a long time ago and um, um, the military, basically the military says that if um, if I go to an association process to them I send for fun does not have to be approved well but, but what did they say in the denial did they did they just deny it for the rfe or did they say there was fraud 
No, they just denied it because of Iraqi. Yeah, so I'm not a big believer in the military stuff. The military loves to promise all kinds of immigration benefits, a lot of which don't ever come true. So I'd be very, very, I, I won't give you advice to do that. And I would tell you to be careful proceeding with them and make sure you get stuff in writing if they're making you promises. Uh, I, none of the lawyers I talk to um, know about it, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's because they keep changing the rules and they keep making shit up. I don't trust them and I don't want you to trust them. That's why lawyers no I, I don't think I don't think most lawyers would recommend people sort of taking that route. Um if you have a valid marriage, I would I would challenge the denial of the seven fifty one and try to prove that they never sent you the RFE. How long ago was that that they sent you the denial notice? About uh two about three weeks ago so that means you have like a week left you need to think you need to rethink what you want to do i i would i would much rather attack the 751 denial than tell you to go join the military i'll tell you that well we we refile it and i guess uh they already suggest to yeah we refile oh yeah yeah. i wouldn't have done that either why not because it's going to take four years oh yeah, but that's, that's what lawyers told us to do. So I don't know. So basically, did you, we did, have a. Did a lawyer file the seven fifty one? Yes. Did the lawyer get the RFE either? Oh uh, uh, no, the, we filed it first while so we didn't expect it to be yeah. this bad. Like got so, it. but then we the second time we filed, we filed the lawyer, and uh, we gathered more evidence this time. Hmm. Okay. So, what's your question for me? Uh oh, I think Ilkin has disappeared. All right, I see our friend Chris is here. Hello, Chris. Hi, Jim. How are you? Great. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. I'm uh, back in the U.S. Um, I was on on with my uh, boyfriend. I remember. Yep, I remember. Uh, what did you guys decide to do in Pakistan? So he he's going to go to Saudi Arabia. Um, he's got a new job there. Um, I, I as far as my research is concerned um i think online marriage is really going to be the only only option there's only three countries that he would be able to go to um you know that we could get married as um but one of the questions i had was um a little bit more esoteric i guess um i'm actually going to be trying to get my italian citizenship and i was wondering is that something that would affect our, you know, marriage in the future case? As, or, far, as, getting, as far as getting him a green card? Right. If he were either an uh, Italian citizen or Italian resident. Not, well, not a resident, obviously, but um, a citizen. Mm, no, not really. I mean, it, you, it, it, sorry. I keep fading in and out. My reception or something is off. Anyway, no, as far as you becoming an Italian citizen should have no effect on anything either way. Oh, and, and him as well. I don't think it'll have any real effect, Chris. Oh. I'm sorry. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. Um, and one of the things he asked me too is is and I think I know the answer is do do we actually need a lawyer um for our case? Um well I think having a lawyer is really helpful. I think we make the process generally go faster, that we put together stronger cases, we get less requests for evidence, less notices of intent to deny, and we know the way that the embassies like to receive the case, the way USCIS likes to receive the case. So I would say it's always helpful to have a lawyer on an overseas marriage case. Okay. And, you know, I mean, my personal thing is that, you know, I, I think they're kind of going to be against us, you know, when... Well, the online marriage is the big thing. The online marriage, the same sex part, there's there's enough to to say that it's not going to be easy. Right. That, that's my concern. Um, and, and as a U.S. citizen, um, you know, because I'm, you know, in a relationship and, and potentially marrying a Pakistani citizen... You know, are there national security like always 
I, I don't call it national security. I don't call it national security. I call it racism. And treating right. people, treat, I, I mean, I say this all the time. I became Muslim 26 years ago, whatever it was, 25 years ago. And the hardest thing for me to do is to bring a man to the United States from a predominantly Muslim country, whether he's Muslim or not. If he's from a country where it's mostly Muslim, then it's it's just straight up slow it down. Slow, if you want to look up the controlled application review and resolution program, CARP, I think they just are on a mission oh. to slow it down. So, yeah, I think you got I think you got sort of three factors that are going to make it not an easy case. OK. Um, all right. Uh, those are all the questions I had. Um, you know, they gave me a really hard time with coming back to the United States. So, you know, they made me really, really concerned. Yeah, they interrogated me both in Canada and coming into the United States. Well, that's probably because you were in Pakistan and because of your beard, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> that, that too. Yeah. That, that always slows them off. Anyway, thanks. thanks a lot for your help, Jim. We'll, you got it, Chris. We'll be talking talk to you soon. You. Okay, buddy. See ya. Speaking of big beards, let's say hi to our friend Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. How you doing, man? Hey, Jim. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. First of all, I left you a five star review. Oh, I appreciate um, that. Thank you. Cool. Thank you for everything you do. I don't have a question for you. I just wanted to update you about my interview today, which was crazy. So oh. it was my daughter's in, my my daughter's interview. Uh, so I went with my daughter, my wife. Um, they kept us waiting for three hours. Um, finally called us in, and the guy says to me, "Where's your green card up to?" And I said nothing there's been no action i had i got my ead but i've had nothing on the on i haven't had an advanced parole or any response to to the i-485 so that oh that explains it i was like what he's like well, we, we, the reason we kept you waiting is because we were trying to pull your file we can't do anything on your daughters until we do do yours because my wife has sponsored me as a husband and my daughter as a as a stepdaughter oh. so he was very apologetic really nice guy um very very apologetic but he's like there's nothing i can do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and get yours approved without an interview i'm going to try and waive the interview for yours i was prepared i'd taken all the documentation to do my interview as well but i guess he didn't have the file in front of him so he's like i'm just going to try and do yours um by waving the interview then i can do your daughter's um and that was basically it so i handed over I'd, I'd taken bad advice i didn't know you when i filed um and I'd, uh, an attorney had filed for me and, and had not submitted any marital evidence so i handed over to him stacks of photos and bills and bank accounts and all the stuff he told me to bring i had with me so he loved it. he's like this is more than anybody's ever brought me he was Hi. delighted Good job. um thank you thank you um so he's like okay this is great this is amazing i've got everything i need um and i'm gonna i'm gonna speak to my supervisor i'm gonna try and get them uh join get both cases worked on to get yours approved and then get your daughters done i wasn't aware they could i was surprised they scheduled an interview for my daughter before anything had happened on mine um, and for him to then say that they can't work on my daughters before mine, the whole thing's very strange. But he's like, it's basically an admin screw up and I'm doing the best I can. But he was really nice. He's like, I'm going to advocate for you. I'm going to push whatever I can do. I'm so sorry. Mm. And that was basically it. Which field office? Miami. When you said you waited three hours, I knew that meant somebody's file wasn't there. I thought it was her file, but it sounds like your file wasn't there. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I was, I was wondering, actually, is there any way of telling if my file has been transferred to Miami yet? You can call USCIS and ask them. And they would say where it's up to. They might. Okay. Because uh, he said he was going to try and join them together. But I was thinking if he doesn't have the, if, if it's it, they're in the same office, which is great. But if they haven't received it yet, it doesn't help anyone. No, I don't think they have yours. So, so we're probably still months away from anything happening on my daughters now because they don't have mine yet. I don't know. We'll see. If you talk to the supervisor, it might get things moving. Is there any chance this guy presses a button and, and issues advanced parole for my daughter? Because because she 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 got upset. She's like she was hoping to travel in the summer, and he felt really bad. So like, I'm going to do whatever I can. He's not issuing her advanced parole or anything. I mean, of everything being slow right now, the thing that's the slowest is advanced parole because they put right. it on the back burner to try to get people EADs and green cards. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. Right. So you, so you reckon that both of us are still months away now? Uh, maybe a month or two, hopefully. All right. A month or two I can live with. All right. I will update you if anything changes. Thanks, man. And thanks for the review. Thank I appreciate it. See you, buddy. That's our old friend, Jonathan. Let's say hi. We, we could go to Munir. He's got a big beard, too. Should we go to Munir? Let's do it. We're on the three, the three beard streak. Hello, Munir. I'm going to go to Christian. Uh, Alaikum, Jim. Alaikum, I'm going to go to Christian after this. So, uh, go ahead, Munir. What's up? I, I, I don't know if you remember or not. We had a conversation last time, and uh, you quoted um, Zootopia and uh, said yeah. either they could be Flash or they could go like slow like Sloth. 
So I just have an update. Uh, last month I got my green card, uh, alhamdulillah, and it got approved in two months and ten days. Nice. And um, I took about three weeks to send them the medical request. Uh, so two months minus the three weeks. Uh, That's great. How fast uh, they did. So I just wanted to thank you. Uh, come here and thank you for everything you do for the community and uh, sure, man. Uh, your advice really, really, really helped. Uh, oh, great. I'm great. I'm great. That makes me very happy, Munir. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right. Let's say hi to Christian. Hello, Christian. Hey, what's up? I'm all the way here in Tampa, Florida. So I have a question to ask you. Well, I have two questions, actually. So on Friday, um, me and my husband got approved. I-130 spousal visa from the USCIS. We got approved in 11 months on Friday. Um, my question is, when he fills out the DS-260 form, one of the questions they ask if he has been denied a visa before. Yeah. And, uh, in uh, 2018, when we were just friends, he did get denied. He's like 60% sure the denial was he couldn't prove strong ties, which is not really a, a bad denial. He just couldn't prove ties to his country. But my question is, what if he's not 100% sure and he can't remember? Because I think it says there to state the reason you think it was denied. I mean, yeah. what if he doesn't remember? So um, the so biggest question, yeah, the biggest question here, Christian, is did he, when he applied for the DS-160, which was for the non-immigrant visa, did he right. do it himself or did he do it through some like outside company? Oh no, he did it by himself. Um, at that time, he wasn't working. He was just going to school. Um, they didn't even look at his documents. But I'm assuming the way he probably answered the questions, and maybe that's why he wasn't working. Maybe they felt like he couldn't prove. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what came about. Yeah. So I would just say something like, to the best of my recollection, it was for not being able to prove sufficient ties back. What country is it? South Africa. To South Africa. Yeah. That's what I. I would just leave it like that. To my best recollection okay mm -hmm. and my second question is um we got married three years after that when he goes to the interview are they going to ask him what changed from two, three years ago or since it's been so long they won't even bring it up well i think i think you're asking the wrong question i think the question you want to be asking is are they going to ask him hey when you applied for that visit visa were you really coming to see your boyfriend christian that's what i think is the real question Right, because he was because at that time we were just Facebook friends, and I told him, "Hey, come come to Florida, you know, I can show you around." Mm -hmm. And he got declined. So as of now, I'd made nine visits to his country from that time. Yeah, that's so, great. And now I'm, you know, you know, we even we even met up in Thailand. So I'm trying to bring all that proof to them to show that we. I just because when he did apply for that travel visa, he did put my name on the application as he was visiting me. So they're gonna put two and two together. Yeah, that's okay. That's as long as he's honest. He's like, "Yeah, I was just going to see someone. I met him on Facebook. I wanted to meet him face to face. You guys said no, so I said okay. So he came to wrong. see. He came to see me. No, no fraud. Go fuck no. yourself. Yeah, yeah, no fraud. Yeah. So thank you, man. And I'm I'm gonna go ahead and give you five stars, man. Thanks. I appreciate it, Christian. I think you're in good shape and good job on getting the I-130 approved and good luck on the DS-260. My pleasure. Thank you, Jim. See you, bud. Okay, bye. bye. All right, we're just flying through them today and. It's uh, Pride Month, so we're, we're dealing with some same-sex couples today, so that's great. All right, let's say hi to Laika. Hello, Laika. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm talking to you. What's up? Yes, uh, I've been watching you, but uh, I, my question is, um, I'm about to be a U.S. citizen, and um, I have a brother here that on, I think, C1D visa. He works for the U.S. Caribbean uh, cruise, uh, temporary work visa, I believe. And I want to eventually get him permanent as immigrant here in the States. Yeah. And his background is he has four year degree college back in the Philippines. But I, from what I figured out from my research, it's hard for Filipinos to get the work visa. Mm hmm. And well, so what's my best options? Should I apply for a green card for a relative, which is siblings, or uh, find him a job for work visa H-1B? So first of all, let's be clear. He's, he's going to leave at whenever his entry on the C visa 
whenever that's up, yes. he's not planning on staying here the whole time, right? No, I'm not doing, he's not doing that. Okay. So I'm looking right now. So, um, the brothers and sisters of us citizens for the Philippines right now, they're working on cases that were filed April of 2004. So that's 19 years. Yeah. That's what I hear from other Filipinos. It's yeah. It took them so a it, long time. It's, it's a lifetime, really. 19 years is a lifetime, right? So, yes. so you can apply for him for that. But then once you do, then he's most likely not going to ever get a non-immigrant visa, like an F1 or a work visa to come to the United States. So that's one thing. Um, so if I applied for that, he can't renew his C1D visa? That he can, but they might give him a hard time because he's demonstrated immigrant intent now. With it being a 20 year wait, whether they would that would make them keep from giving him another C visa, I don't think so, but they might. So he's got to be aware of that. Because that that visa, uh, it's good for five years. He keeps he can he can keep coming back and forth. For right. Five years. And that might just be his best bet. I hate to say. But uh, from what I see, it's kind of hard to find an employer for for him. For him to get a land base. Yeah, what's job. his degree? What's his degree in? Um, bachelor degree in hotel and restaurant management. So he yeah, yeah, that's gonna be tough. He could he could maybe come on work and travel on a J and then not make sure he doesn't sign up for rule two twelve E, which makes him go back home to the Philippines, which for work and travel he shouldn't, and then he could maybe make some contacts and then they might sponsor him for a a work a work-based green card or work visa, but it's tough. The, no the, the working travel is, that's the tourist visa, right? No, work and travel J1. It's a J1 visa. He'd have to go through an agency and they would, they would connect him to, I mean, if he has a degree in hotel management and he's been working on a cruise ship, then I would think there'd be a lot of hotels in America that would want to want to hire him on a J1. So that's with that background, that that's what that says to me is a J one would be the right way to get into the country. Because I land, know that, on, like on the work visa, there's like a special, like if you've been uh, awarded as a special or uh, like some type of good em employee, it, it should categorize you higher, right? Like prioritize you better. Well, that's for. I think that might be about green cards. That's a totally different thing. I'm just talking about a, a work visa to come in the United States so that he can then make a good impression with people, and then hopefully they'll sponsor him for maybe an EB3 green card. It's a it's a it's a hard road to hoe, but that's the only way I see him getting into the country to be able to maneuver up the ladder. Okay. And how long is like normally the processing for J1 V I J1 visa? Not too long. Okay. But, he's, and, but, he, but, but he has to find an agency to sponsor him. It's not, he doesn't need an immigration lawyer. He doesn't do it all on his own at the embassy. He needs to find a J one agency. Do you, uh, it's just, just another question. Do you have any tip where I can find those agency? Yeah. I've so I would, just, I would just type in J one mm -hmm. work, work and travel, uh, state department agencies. Oh, Okay. All right, thank you so much. I've been I, I've been listening to your show and trying to get connected, but finally. Well, here, thanks so much. <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good day. I like it. All right, Pat's back. What do you say, Pat? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm good. So, Jim, I have one question. Um, the email I should send those documents you told me last Monday is info at hackingimmigrationlaw.com, right? Yeah. So as you said, I should send you a copy of my green card, um, the copy of the approval notice, and um, there's one doc, one last document for the asylum that um, I have to send. What's the name of that document? Oh, the receipt notice. Okay, sounds good. I'll listen, send hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have you know my real email address. That's just like the main email address. Don't send it to that one. Send it to mine. You know mine. Um, can you give that to me again? No, not on this show. I can't. You know my real one. I, you get emails from me probably three times oh, a week yes. with my real yes. email. Use that yes. one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds All right. good. All right. Um, see, you, buddy. I'm, I'm yeah, just send it to me. Just, just remind me. Just say, Jim, you need to with, help me withdraw this asylum case. Okay. Sounds good. Just remind so, me. Jim, I have a friend, right? So yeah. he got approved for um, asylum. So he's wondering how. Um, what are the 
that people he can add on his asylum case? Is it like just direct relative or um, cousins and family members can Spous- benefit? Spouse and kids. Spouse and kids. Oh, no direct relative. Those are direct relatives. No, no others. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, Jim. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Bye, buddy. Yep. Pablo's been waiting a long time. Hello, Pablo. Hey, hey, Jim. Thank you for having me for all the things sure. you do. I have one question. I'm going to get married to an American citizen in August. Congratulations. Uh, here... Thank you. <laughs> we're here in Colombia. Uh, the main thing is that I applied for a tourist visa and got it denied because I told them I was going to meet her. Uh, I meet her family and just like I uh, showed some intent of migrating, right? Um, so. The question is if that's going to affect my case at all uh you know if we get married we apply for the i-130 and all that um beautiful process yeah in my experience they don't hold it against you for trying to come on a visit visa um when you then later on apply based on marriage or fiance i sort of i sort of feel like this is totally just jim i sort of feel like they say they go haha we caught you and now you have to go through the regular process and that's the full punishment that you get. But I don't think I don't I've never in, as long as as long as you never got close to lying about it. Right. That's the only place where you could get in trouble is if you like totally lie. like sometimes people will actually get that visit visa and then they'll get busted at the airport because they'll they'll basically have on their phone text to their fiance or girlfriend or boyfriend that says, ha ha ha, I fooled those fuckers. And I, I made it in. I got my visa. Here I come. Right. That. So as long as you don't yeah. do anything like that or even like lie, like as long as you're I wanted to go see Julie and Julie's in the United States. And now Julie's who I'm married to. They're not going to hold it against you as long as you never lied or tried to trick them. Yeah, that's uh, the thing we decided as a couple is to be all transparent and tell the truth always. Uh, and, always. You know, it was, yeah. night, it was a hard time. But anyway, and so the other thing, the other question I have is as far as lawyers go we are looking for someone in both the usa and colombia yeah uh, because of laws but what's your kind of advice or opinion on that like i'm assuming why you, both why do you need a lawyer in colombia you don't need a lawyer in colombia um so first of all we have we have a great lawyer here in in our office who's from colombia she works for us as a as a law clerk um her name's um yuli and she's great not this Huli. this is yuli we have Juliana, we have Huli and Yuli. Anyway, um, you don't need, there's not a reason to have a lawyer in Colombia because the lawyer can't go to your interview. And that's really the only thing that happens in Colombia. So everything can be done from here. Um, and is your, is your fiance, is your fiance going to come back to the United States? Yeah. Um, after the marriage, we're going to stay here for some time. I'm- okay. So how long has it been since your fiance lived in the United States? Well, she's, she goes, she comes and goes. Yeah. So she has a house and property. She hasn't abandoned her residency or come to live oh, full time no. in Columbia. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it'll all be done on paper. There won't be any interview in the United States. And frankly, well, I just was looking at a case on my, on the front desk today. We probably don't want her in Colombia when it comes time for your interview because nothing good happens when the U.S. citizen is in town for the beneficiaries embassy interview. We want we want her back in the United States getting ready for old Pablo to get out of Colombia and come to come to America. Yeah. Oh, OK. That's a, that's good advice. Thanks. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I guess my question is when it comes to you getting married overseas or outside the US, what's kind of the timeline I should be expecting? We're going to get married in August. Uh, I should present present everything, you know, right then and there or right after that. Uh, yeah. is there... So usually we get started like a month ahead of time because we can get a lot of the stuff done so that the marriage certificate sort of becomes the last thing. I guess you've already researched the rules in Colombia for getting married yeah. and everything for her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So w- once you're legally married, then you'll file an I-130 petition. 80, 80, 85% of those I-130 petitions are taking about a year. 10% are taking two months. Like there are some cases that are going faster. I don't think overseas cases are the ones that are going faster. It's usually the ones here. Um, then once that's done, then it goes to the National Visa Center. National Visa Center has actually been pretty quick. So maybe two, three months 
at the National Visa Center, that's sort of like starting over. You're doing the DS-260, you're filing and all that stuff, paying fees. And then it's just a matter of how busy the embassy is in Bogota, how, how long before they can take you. And that's probably going to be like three, four, five, six months, something like that. So this is about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. All right, Jim. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Pablo, have, have a day. great day. And good luck in August. See you, buddy. Thank you. Bye. All right. We have a lot of great calls today. Love is in the air. Lots of weddings, lots of marriages, lots of green cards. We love to see it. We love to see it. You know, we're on a mission to help 10,000 people get their U.S. citizenship, but we probably should be on a mission to help 10,000 people get their marriage-based green cards or immigrant visas because that's what we spend most of our time around here doing. That'll do it for today's show. I'll be back tomorrow. Sorry for those of you, including Bugio, who I was not able to get to. Sorry, everybody, for waiting. Um, we will be here tomorrow at 4. Um, Bugio, stay tight. I'll talk to you after. Yep. All right. Uh, everybody else, we'll see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Central. And uh, have a good night. Cooley, thanks for being here. Tomorrow will be episode 381 of the Immigration Answer Show. Thank you, everybody.